Some staff members at major U.S. pharmacy chains like Walgreens and CVS walked off the job this week over working conditions. The three-day walkouts began yesterday. The work action follows similar walkouts last month in Arizona, Washington, Oregon, and Massachusetts. So joining us now to talk a little bit more about why these walkouts are happening is Shane Jerominski. Uh, he's a licensed independent pharmacist. I, I tried to make it roll off my tongue, um, but I don't think I succeeded. But I'm glad that you're here to, to talk to us about this. Um, I know when I look sort of at my local pharmacist, which is a CVS, boy, are they working hard. I mean, it, it really crowded. does. Yeah, um, it, it looks like they're under pressure. What are some of the changes that you'd like to see from pharmacy chains to improve the workplace? Well, sure. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, the, the working conditions are incredibly difficult right mm -hmm. now. We are pushing for technicians to have a better rate of pay. The starting rate should be $20 an hour across the, the board for technicians, and they should have guaranteed hours. The problem is, is that CVS and Walgreens are in this cost-cutting mode now that we're not in the throes of COVID vaccinations. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to do everything they can to, to cut costs. And the problem is, is that co cutting costs leads to pharmacies that are very unsafe. If you're practicing in that environment, pharmacists, but pharmacists by working for CVS and Walgreens are putting their lice at risk and they're putting patient safety at risk. That's the problem. And that's what we, we're, we're doing this for is the American people. So uh, so to understand um, so people who are watching this will when they go into their CVS, they're going to wonder w why the pharmacist isn't there. It's because. You, you feel, and um, th those of uh, you who are striking think that there should be m more staff. In other words, more pharmacists, right? Because mm -hmm. we have to separate the people who work at a CVS and those who are behind the counter at the, at the pharmacy uh, counters. Um, you would like to see more pharmacists hired, and you'd like to see an increase in pay. So it's, it's about technicians. It's the ancillary staff. Usually when you oh, walk into a pharmacy, there's only, one phar there's only one pharmacist on duty. And that pharmacist is responsible for every clinical decision, for every prescription that goes out the door. The technicians are the integral part, though. They're the ones that are adjudicating claims, making sure that patient's insurance is working correctly. They're the ones that are filling the prescription so that the pharmacist can check it counsel patients. Mm -hmm. But because there's a lack of technician support, pharmacists really have to only take a few seconds on every prescription. They're not able to counsel appropriately to catch mistakes. And that's how you introduce medication errors. And we have just been overburdened with the amount of vaccinations that we have to do. Uh, in, in these chains, there our, our primary job is to safely and accurately check prescriptions. But we've become vaccination clinics because the margins are so much better mm -hmm. that most of these stores have 100 plus vaccination schedules every single day. Uh, CVS and Walgreens, it's usually about one every 10 minutes. And then they're, you're incentivized to push as many vaccines as possible. Mm -hmm. So while they're there to get their flu shot, you'll get prompts at the register if they're going to have like shingle shots or pneumonia shots or anything like that. It's a so fascinating it's conundrum because I, I, I mean, I'm, now that I'm thinking about this, I mean, on one hand, you have these large uh, companies like CVS and Walgreens mm. who are attempting, like Target, uh, also Walmart, mm. they, they're trying to be a one-stop shopping mm. for consumers, right? You can not only, you can mm. get some food, you can get something to drink, but you can also pick up your pharmacy, yeah. and you can get a shot for yeah. flu, for COVID. Um, and yet, uh, it, it does strike me that um, as big as they are and as numerous as they are, like for example, here in New yeah. York City, that you that you might be better off in some cases going to a smaller pharmacy, well, but that's not easily done with people. Some people have insurance that only allows them to go to it. Well, here is the ongoing challenge, right? The, your your local pharmacy, your mom and pop your pharmacy, and pop. that has been, those numbers have been diminishing for the last 50 right. years, right? And as you know, these big chains, Rite Aid, CVS, Walgreens, they've all announced sort of mass closures of hundreds of stores. And part of the challenge that they say they're facing now, I think it's Rite Aid is dealing with some major um, uh, settlements having to do with the, um, the opioid crisis. But what CVS is sort of the challenge that it says it's facing is that you're not going to the local CVS necessarily to buy your shampoo anymore or your razor blades. You can just go online oh. and order it and have it delivered to your house, right? So they're saying we need to shift the business model, but the end result is going to be fewer pharmacies, 
right? Which means more people going to a handful of pharmacies. And I imagine, and I could be wrong, when you talk about a Pharmageddon, this is kind of part of what you're talking about, is that if you think the pressure's on pharmacists now, it's going to be even greater when there are fewer places to go. For sure. But they, they actually do need to, to rethink their, their business model. It might not be access to care on every corner, but access to safe care on every other corner. Mm. That's that's really what's going to have to happen, that they're going to be better loca- better staffed locations with two pharmacists there. Mm. One pharmacist that's going to be totally accessible to a patient at all times, that they can spend 10 minutes when, a, when an elderly patient comes in and needs counseling. Those types of things, that might be the new business model that they should should explore. And yes, if you cannot, if your local store is overrun, you should go to an independent. You should walk in there and see that that is the environment that pharmacists want to practice in. Mm-hmm. We just want to be able to take care of patients safely, and we're not willing to risk safety for the expense of a corporate bottom line. Mm. So uh, can you detail, uh, uh, Jerome, for us uh, the ripple effect that you're describing here uh, and how workers, what workers are experiencing on the job? I mean, I walked into my CVS a couple of weeks ago and the line for pickup My and gosh. then the, the technician came out and said, I'm sorry, it's just me yeah. and the pharmacist. And and you can see all the prescriptions are all sort of like yeah. stacked there. I mean, you, all you got to do is look back yeah. there and, and, and see, what's see going on. what the concern is. Sure. If you if you think of that, there's 50, you said there's a line of 15 people. You go into any Starbucks or, or any other location like that. It, you would see more than two baristas behind the counter, mm-hmm. but a one pharmacist and one technician is the business model that they have right now. And they'll say they just don't have enough uh, enough people to 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 practice. So I've seen a lot of these reports, and everything CVS and Walgreens push is that there's just not enough people. There's a shortage of pharmacists. There's not a shortage of pharmacists. There's a shortage of pharmacists and technicians willing to work in that practice environment. Mm. If I'm a pharmacist, I don't want to put my license at risk. And if I'm a technician, I don't want to work for $16 an hour when it's such a high pressured environment Mm -hmm. and I'm getting screamed at all day because I'm the only person that they see. Yeah, Uh, Shane, uh, what an eye opening. um, I mean, what you're talking about is I think what people are already starting to experience, and uh, you and your fellow mm-hmm. pharmacists say it's only going to get worse. Uh, thank you for sharing uh, your story with us, Shane Jerominski. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We should note CVS sent a statement to CBS News. It reads in part in response to recent feedback from our pharmacy teams. We're making targeted investments to address their key concerns, including enabling teams to schedule additional support as needed, mm-hmm. enhancing pharmacists and technician recruitment and hiring and strengthening pharmacy technician training. So we also heard from Rite Aid on the walkout. They released a statement to CBS News that reads, in part, we remain committed to providing safe, productive, and supportive work environments for all our associates, including our dedicated pharmacists. 